All right, everyone, so for our final week of the course, what we're going to do is start to um, wrap up some of the loose ends of our project. This is what we've got so far, and um, last week we were concentrating on JavaScript. Remember, there's that customization aspect of things that we can customize the app the web app so that it shows the person's name throughout the different screens. That's one of the last things we did. Uh, and that was using a HTML5 local storage. What we also did was a more technical behind the scenes thing that uh, if you copied the project from last time, if you copied the whole September 25th folder, uh, you should have an index file outside of the mobile project file. And that index file was where we did a little bit of JavaScript um, detection, where if you're coming to this on a desktop browser, it serves you the desktop version of the project. If we went to it on a mobile browser, we would automatically get the mobile version of the project. So those are some of the things we touched. Oh, and then also geolocation, getting map data, and that sort of thing. So we had our intro to JavaScript last time. Now if we look at the project further, well there's still things that um, about the content and such we haven't filled in, but that's a, a bit secondary. Uh, we might address that together, but most likely um, whatever you want to fill into these sections is, is fine by me. Um, or I might just provide you with a, a version that has content in it already. But what I want to deal with is, remember, the end result of this class is that we have a, a web version of our project. So ultimately, what we've created here should live on a web server. So there's still a few things I want to do to get this fully set up as a, as a, web, as a website. Um, so let me show you this. Uh, when you browse just about every website nowadays, in just about any web browser, you're browsing Amazon.com or you're browsing um, Bing.com or CNET.com, whatever. You're going to just about every website. And what you often see, if they uh, cooperate here, what you often see is a little icon on the tab of the web browser. Right? So on these just in these three examples, there's the Amazon icon, Bing, CNET. I could load up just about every website, and there'll be some sort of icon. Let me bring up my company's website. We've got one. Let me bring up my personal blog site. I've got one. Just about every, uh, just about every website has one of these things up here. It's got a name. Does anyone know the name from a previous class or experience? What are those things called? Favicon, Fave Icon, Favicon. It's got different pronunciations. Basically, I call it a Fave Icon. Favicon. A Fave Icon uh, is a specific kind of a graphic that uh, is some good branding to add to your website because everyone else has it. And you don't want to do it just because everyone else is doing it, but you want to do it for branding purposes. Let's say a person is, like many of us, we're using our web browser and we're opening up a bunch of tabs, a bunch of windows, a bunch of links, and you want to quickly find uh, from, your, from a bunch of your open tabs, you want to find the, the site you were looking at a moment ago. Uh, mo probably a bit subconsciously, you saw the icon of a particular site. It stuck with you, and then when I look here, okay, it was the red one. And then I can focus. Yes, that was the CNET link. So for uh, for that, it's a good idea to to add this fave icon when uh, someone uh, bookmarks your site, depending on on the web browser again, and uh, they try to bring up the they try to bring up the the bookmarks again. They should see your icon in their bookmarks. So once uh, someone has collected a sea of bookmarks or, or favorites, whatever your web browser calls it, again there will be that, brow that little bit of branding here. Because this is going to save some text. You can add a sea of text. 
but then that icon is what's hopefully going to stand out and that'll remind people about your site and they'll get back to it. Um, so what's useful about that icon as well is if a person visits your mobile site on their, their uh, mobile device, you can also have people, if they choose to bookmark your, your site, uh, it can also grab that icon and put it as the icon of your, of your bookmark. If you're on an Android phone, you can save the shortcut of your web app. Uh, the person can save their, your, your project as a, as a shortcut to the Android user's home screen, and it'll take that icon as well. So it'll look like it's an app that's installed, uh, and the icon, every app needs an icon, so uh, the fav icon can be used for that purpose as well. If someone goes to your site on, a, on an iPhone, same thing. If they choose to save your web app on their home screen, it'll grab that icon and put it on their home screen, or Windows Phone, just about every mobile device. If you don't set this up, what could happen, depending on the, on the mobile device, is that it takes a little screenshot of your, of your web app. And it might take this screenshot here and make it really small and really hard to read, really illegible. So it's a good idea to add our own fav icon so that if someone chooses to, to save it, kind of like this, right? You'll see a little small icon that the person saves to their mobile device. Uh, that's a bit of branding, and it looks a little more polished and professional. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about these sorts of uh, icing on the cake, tying up the loose ends sort of concepts today. Uh, and one of them is the fave icon. So I've got our project, today's project, and it's loaded up in Chrome. And if you load it up in Firefox, there's no fave icon. There's probably an empty icon there or the or a default generic icon. Uh, I'm going to open um, Firefox just to compare. So in uh, in Chrome, there's like an empty blank document, and then in Firefox, there's nothing there. It looks a little awkward because you probably see them everywhere. You go to Facebook, you go to Twitter, you go to Gmail, everything has a fave icon. So we're going to set one up. The problem is that um, there are two things we need to do for this to work. One is write some code, and after five weeks, obviously, we're pros in that. Right? And the other aspect is the actual graphic. So we need to develop a graphic so that the code displays uh, can display the right thing. And we can accomplish both. If you're not a big uh, professional uh, graphic designer, you've never really touched any graphic software, I'll, I'll show you some very useful tools uh, where you'll still be able to accomplish something uh, interesting and useful. Uh, so what we're going to do is Let's try it this way first. Um, uh, let's open up a web browser. And let's go to this website, dynamicdrive.com. Dynamicdrive.com. The thing about creating the fave icon <clears throat> that also trips people up is that it's not a normal type of graphic. It's not a standard kind of web graphic, so to speak. When we've been dealing with our project, these pictures that we put in our project, they've either been uh, JPEGs or uh, GIFs or possibly ping files. Those three types of, of files are the most common web graphics, .jpg, .gif, .ping. But in order for us to create a fav icon, we need something that is a .ico file. And usually, your graphics software will not create this type of 
picture file. It's a special kind of picture file. It's a bit uncommon. It's very common in the aspect that many websites have it, but it's less common that I see a graphics software that creates it natively. Like, I don't believe you can create one through Photoshop. Everyone has probably at least heard of Photoshop. How many of you have ever used Photoshop? Right, several people. You can't really create a, an icon, an ICO file, an ICO file, straight from Photoshop. That's, what, that's where Dynamic Drive comes in. Dynamic Drive can generate fave icons based on whatever picture you, you feed it. So here on, fav, uh, here on dynamicdrive.com, let's click on Fave Icon Generator on the left side where we've got Web Tools. Fave Icon Generator. And this site's been around a while. I've seen it for at least um, six to eight years. And they've had this tool around that long. And in the, in the span of internet time, that's a long time, six to eight years to have this website. Uh, and it hasn't really changed much. It still does one thing, and it does it well, is it converts uh, just about any graphic you, you, you put into it into a fav icon, specifically here it says supported image types, GIF, JPEG, PNG, and BMP. But usually you deal with GIF, JPEG, or PNG. So basically we're going to upload a file and it's going to convert it. And then we're going to download that fav icon file and then put it in our project. So this mentions about using GIF or PNG with transparency if you require it. That means here, notice this example has this fave icon and it's in the address bar and um, it looks like it's a letter K or a JK or something on top of a white background. Well a person can customize their web browser, their modern web browsers to uh, give it a, a yellow background back there or, or black or, or just about any color. So if we upload our picture and our fav icon has a white background, it'll sort of look a little bit jarring on, on the web browser that no longer has a white background. For example, Chrome here has this little bit of a gray background in the tab. If I, if I created a fav icon with a white background, I'll see a little white shape behind the icon. It'll look a little bit odd. So here it talks about if you want it to be transparent, we usually do, we should upload a graphic that's in the format of GIF or PNG, because those can have transparent backgrounds. So we're going to upload a picture that exists, and then later on we'll create our own picture, our own fav icon and such. But a limitation here is that the maximum size that it can accept is 150 kilobytes. So nothing out of your digital camera. Uh, nothing even out of your cell phone. That's much too high quality. But also think about these, these examples that I've showed you. Uh, CNET and uh, what else? Gizmodo.com, etc. Just about every website out there. Notice the icon is really small, very compact, but gets the message across in a really small space. So dynamic drive, there's their stylized D. CNET, well, it's their C logo with the pipe character and a little uh, button. Gizmodo has their G with a background, and it's got a gradient. So you're not going to have the space there to write your whole, or to add your whole icon for your, for your app. So mine, for example, here, it's just, you know, the stylized letter V that I have as a logo. Um, so we have very little real estate to work with. And if you notice, most of the sites that you visit don't have a very ornate fave icon. It's very simple. Uh, let me try this one, fedex.com. Theirs, I would say, is an example of doesn't quite work. 
their FedEx uh, text obviously is very memorable, but when you shrink it down that size, and here I am zoomed in, I can't quite read that. I kind of know what it is because of the site that I'm on, but it doesn't quite work as a, as a fav icon. And also theirs is seems to have a white background. Very subtle. You might be able to see it on the projector, but there's a white background behind the text, but then I've got a gray tab, so I kind of see a little bit of white there. I may or may not want that. That's up to your website, to your, your brand. Alright, so just to see how it works. We're going to um, upload a picture and then write our code and then see the result. And then we're going to work a little bit better by, by designing a, a real kind of icon and then using it in our project. Now the thing is that um, I need to give you a file because we have some built-in we have some built-in pictures into Windows, but they're too big. I don't want to get I don't want to diverge too much from what I want to talk about. I'm going to assume I'm going to give you a picture but I need to resize it a bit. Uh, I'm going to give you a picture which is a little bit of a better size. So if you're on your laptop, you can use your own picture, but I'm going to put into the network a picture of a koala. Okay, so if you go to the network folder, you're going to see a, a file called koala.jpg. Copy that for the moment onto your desktop. Just get a copy of that koala file. It's at the top level. It's not in September 25th. It's just at the top level here. Again, if you're on your own device, just use your own picture. But uh, if you want to follow here, you can get this uh, Koala JPEG file. We couldn't, we could not use it as is because it's too large for dynamic drive, file size wise. So uh, make sure you copy that Koala file to your desktop. And okay, here I've got mine on the desktop. And depending on the size of your screen, there's my koala JPEG. And I can still tell it's a koala. But that's still like uh, maybe four times larger than what our fav icon size is ultimately going to be. So, spoiler alert, this is not going to turn out well. But I'm just showing you that sometimes people start off with, okay, cool, this tool will make my picture into a fav icon. Perfect, do it. But it comes out really bad because fav icons are really tiny. But we'll go on. Uh, my, fa my Koala JPEG is on the desktop. Go back to Dynamic Drive and select Choose File. Right there in the middle, Choose File. Mine's on the desktop here, so there's my Koala JPEG file. I'm going to select the koala.jpg file and open it. And then don't forget to select Create Icon here. And so after you tell it to create the file, the fav icon that is, then you get it, a little preview of it right there. So several problems here. One is that we uploaded a picture that was more rectangular 
than square. So make a note of that. Fave icons should be square. Um, same width, same height, square. We uploaded a rectangle. <clears throat> the width was wider than the height. So this slightly distorted it because it took a rectangle and made it a square. That's the first problem. The second is I see a gray thing on top of a gray thing. Now I know that it's a koala because I uploaded it, but someone that goes to my uh, to my site is going to have a hard time telling what that is. So again, this is not the most optimal approach. We'll do the optimal approach in a moment. But what you want to do here with our results, it's not the best, but we'll use it. We've got a, a button here that says download fave icon. So go ahead and click to download that fave icon. And it should probably download to your desktop, or if it asks you what to do, click Save. Don't select to open, click Save. And on your desktop, on your desktop, you should have a new faveicon.ico file. So, in my example, I've got on the desktop koala.jpg, and then I've got faveicon.ico.ico. That's a graphic file, a special kind of graphic file, and that's what we're going to use. So make sure you've got both of the, well, at least the faveicon.ico file on the desktop. Did everyone create your icon file and download it? Anyone need a little help? Most likely it will be that size. That's fine. Depending on the complexity of the picture you uploaded. In my example here, also mine looks very fuzzy. Again, because this is like four times larger than what a fave icon really is, so I'm not worried about that yet. So that fave icon, then you want to you want to copy it or move it into the folder of of, of today's work, into your September thirtieth or whatever you've called yours, um, inside your mobile website project. inside of your mobile website project you would want it inside the mobile website yes inside your mobile website folder project I'm going to address that in a moment but uh, we'll put it in the mobile website project and so the fave icon is a standard that um, that grew sort of organically. Uh, I think I, I read that Internet Explorer was, was the first browser that had the fave icon specification. It was unofficial and then eventually became rather official, and it's pretty official nowadays. And the thing is that many modern web browsers, they look automatically uh, in on the server, is there a fave icon file? And if there is, display it. But we shouldn't rely on that because perhaps an older browser doesn't follow that. So we will write some code to access this file. So once you've got your faveicon.ico file in the mobile website folder, let's go to Notepad and let's write some code that'll connect your project with the icon file. Let's go to Notepad. And uh, we're going to write some code. I'm going to make this above line 8. We've got something that there is, is currently saying meta name, Apple mobile web app, and Apple uh, mobile web app status bar style. After that, make a new line above your title. We're going to write a line of code here. And this one is going to be our link tag. 
And this is one of that 1% of tags that does not have a pair. So the link tag does not have an opening and closing pair. It's just got an opening tag. It's self-contained. Uh, self but inside of the link tag, this is where we're going to add a bunch of uh, attributes, a bunch of these properties. So inside of the link tag, we're going to write rel equals. This is similar to when we had this style sheet over here. We've got a link. What's the relationship between this document and the other document? In that case, it was a style sheet. In this case, our rel is, is set to shortcut icon. Notice there's a space here. Shortcut icon. And then the next attribute is the link to the icon, which is href. And since we put the since we put the icon <clears throat> in the same folder as our current project, we simply write the file name favicon.ico. So then uh, go ahead and save and run. I'm running in Firefox. And my result is I should get my fav icon in the tab bar. If you didn't get it to show up, here's a couple of things that might happen. I've noticed that if you run this in Chrome, sometimes it shows it, sometimes not. Same thing with Firefox. Sometimes it shows it, sometimes not. I'm going to try to run it in in IE, and that one didn't. Now here's the thing, that sometimes the reason it doesn't come up, you saw that it worked in two out of three browsers. I, it will work in IE and the other browsers, it's just that sometimes the fav icon doesn't load, especially if you're testing your project from your hard drive, from your flash drive, from a non-server location. For some reason, some of the web browsers don't show the icon unless you are on a web server. So here I've tested it on three web browsers and it works on two of three so it works. It will work on the third one once it's online. So did everyone see their fave icon? Is everyone happy with that fave icon? It's okay. We know it's a koala, I guess. But wouldn't it look better like one of these stylized graphics that you see that people, that the web designers stress over and make every pixel look good? That's what we want. So we'll deal with that. We'll address that in a bit. But notice that was our two-pronged our two attack. One is we need the right code. It's relatively straightforward. The other is more involved, which is we need to make a fave icon graphic. And one way is use dynamic drive and just take your picture, convert it, it's done. And I'll show you other better ways. Question. If we put our fave icon in the images folder mm -hmm. in our href, do we just put an images slash in front of the file name? That would work technically if we wanted to put our icon. Uh, if we wanted to put our icon in the images folder, we would have to redo our tech our our code over here to say images slash favicon dot ico, yes. However, uh, this is sort of one of these gray area standards that, you know, there's de facto and de jure, and I forget which is which, but one is saying that, like, this is the letter of the law, and this is, like, spirit of the law, I guess, which is that uh, it's sort of like you should put your fave icon on the root of your project. You could technically put it in the images folder and write the path, but then some older web browsers might not understand that. So it's sort of like put it on the root folder for the most compatibility, and that's what I recommend, to put the icon in the root of our project. 
So then that comes back to, well, this is technically not the root of our project, is it? We're inside of the mobile version of our project. The root of our website is one level up. That's the root. When someone visits our website, you know, victor.com, that's what they're going to see first. And then it'll either detect to go to the mobile version or the desktop version. So actually, we should put our fav icon on this level, and then we'll change our code. Um, so. But are we changing the uh, directory? Location change? We are, but what I've seen is that once the web browser visits the root of your site and finds your fav icon, usually it sticks. So even if you then go to a subfolder, it still already had your fav icon in the cache, so it'll, it'll show up. So we'll do this. We'll go to our folder here, our project folder, and we're going to select the fav icon. And if you want to cover all bases, we can leave a copy here and make another copy on the root, uh, just to be safe. But um, And this is only a few bytes, so it probably wouldn't matter too much. 894 bytes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select that fav icon and cut it. Not copy, cut it. You can copy if you want. I'm going to paste one level above. I'm going to move it from the subfolder to the root folder of our project. That means I need to rewrite my code in my project. And then it might be a good idea to add the code also to that index file. So if you, if you know already a little bit about HTML, and we've talked about paths and such a bit, but we'll talk about it some more here, technically if we go back to our code, that href no longer works. We're pointing, we're giving directions to a file that we've moved. Question? Well, that's where I put it was on, on, on the mobile and it worked fine. That's what I see it. So, yeah, I put it just like that. That's where I put it originally and it worked. Mm. Yeah, I think that because it's finding it in the root directory, it's automatically working. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it that it's looking in the root, although the, the odd thing is, uh, well, you know, we did go into the mobile file, and from the point of view of history, this is the root if we open this file first. So, uh, have you have it in both. Okay. Uh, actually, I moved it, and it's working fine. I haven't changed the code. Try to uh, empty your history and your cache and everything, and then see what happens. What might happen is it doesn't find it because it's not in memory anymore. But uh, this is the sort of thing about, we, we, it seems to work, I would beta test it more to make sure it really works, or I would try to be more sure by, by changing our code here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, and this also gets us into our talk about paths, that sometimes we need to access files that are in different folders. And a lot of times what we've done here is our path simply is written like, if we've got a picture, like over here, uh, we write the name of the picture inside the name of the folder. Well, in this case, we're not going to access a file that's in a lower level of our project. We're going to access a file that's in a higher level of our project. We might not have talked about that in this class. So we need to change our path like this. Uh, our href will say dot dot slash. That is saying exit the current directory, go up one level in the folder structure, and then find the file. So dot dot slash takes you from the current location. I'm inside the mobile website folder. From the current location, take us up one level. That takes us back to my September 30th folder. And then there, I find the fav icon. You're correct about the history. The history? OK. Yeah, so the web browser remembered the fav icon history, and it kept it for some reason, and then when you clear it out, it doesn't find it. Okay. So dot dot slash takes you out of the current folder. Um, here's your pop quiz. If I had put the fav icon into a new folder called image on the root, 
how would I need to change my path here? Well, I'm in an image folder and another folder. How do I do that? And that's right. So the dot dot slash is first saying get out of the current directory. So we're up to September 30th. Then the next part of the path is IMG, the image folder. Go into the image folder and then you'll find the fav icon. So this is what is known as a relative path in that it relates to what you are, where you are currently at. So is it the convention to put it not in the image file, but in like the flat area where the index file is? Exactly. That's the convention and that's what I recommend as well, which is to not put your fav icon in any subfolder. Put it on the root. Yes. So, does that uh, dot dot slash, is that just one level? Mm -hmm. What if there's a, another level up you need to go? Do you do dot dot slash twice? Mm -hmm. Every level that you want to go out from the current level, you can put a dot dot slash there. So, yeah, you can, you know, that's three levels up right here. So, you've got a project inside of a folder inside of a folder. And here I've gone up to the top level. Okay, so we've put our fav icon into the root of our project and changed our code to reflect that. Uh, I'm going to copy that line 8 and then also add it to my index file of my root project. So open that index file that's up on your September 30 folder and we'll paste again in the head section um, just about anywhere I'm gonna put it above my title sort of where I put it uh, for my other project above title remember this goes from top to bottom and so if we see it early up on the head section then it should load it early on Good eye. Exactly. If we left it at is, as is, it would try to go one level above our root of our of our root. And um, depending on your server, how it's set up, there may be no upper level above above that. So here now, our our new line, mine is line four, you remove the dot dot slash. Now the file is found within the same level as my index HTML file in my root. In my root. Uh, site. Okay, so what we saw here was an example of using a pre-made graphic. And um, it worked, but this is not an optimized fav icon. Let me show you another website that is all about making an optimized website from scratch. So for some of you this will be great because you can put your artistic self out and for some of you it won't be so great because you're not artistic. Question? Since, since for our, our mapping we had created another HTML file, the DIR file, should we put the fav icon in there too? Yeah, technically, so that's a good point. Uh, over on the DIR file, that one doesn't have any reference to fav icon, and technically we should put one in there too, the same one as index, um, because we can't assume that the fav icon will load, even though the fav icon might have already been in the browser's history. So it, it would be a good idea to put the same fav icon code in, in DIR. So I'm going to uh, load up my web browser and give you another fave icon resource. Let's go to this website, faveicon 
.cc not .com, .cc favicon.cc is this website that um, allows you to create a favicon from scratch. Remember, there's no E in there. There's an I. favicon.cc. And what, sh what loads up here is uh, a simple grid where you can design your fav icon pixel by pixel, choose your own colors, etc. And then as you draw it here, look on the top left corner of your tab and see how it's being designed or added at the same time you're making it. So you get a preview of it as you make it. also down here under the preview. You might not work with, with our version of Internet Explorer, so try a different browser. That's why it's in uh, still in beta, I guess. So um, here we can design our own icon where it uh, will look exactly how we want. Again, if we're if we're not uh, very versed in any graphics software, maybe this is the best we can do, and this might be all that you need. But uh, here you can create your own, and notice what it's also doing is anything where you did not draw is transparent. So you see the result up here that inside of the face of the smiley is transparent so it shows the color uh, behind it in the tab if I did want a color there like, like white I have um, I don't have a paint bucket I guess I have to do it manually let's say I choose white no, but that grabs an existing color and then I paint. From the other part of the page. Yes, but what I'm saying is I want to I want to fill in white everywhere that should be white. Okay. You know, all of this area. So with my paint bucket I want to click and it fills it all in. Like Photoshop. So I guess I have to go in and fill it in manually. So I, it's very subtle, but I see a difference there in that there's white inside of the face and then there's the gray of the web browser behind it. And so it is not colored and is transparent. And depending on your icon, like dynamic drive over here, that's what you might want. Maybe your logo is like that, that it's got a hollow shape inside the type. Um, and that should actually be white, not the color of the web browser. Because notice here, okay, I think it's more noticeable here. As I change different tabs, if I go back to dynamic drive and this tab fades away, now do you see the difference? That where I colored white, it's, it shows up, and where I didn't is the color of the tab. Question. The, yeah, uh, we'll play with that in a moment. We've got import image, and that allows you to import an existing image and then draw on top of it. But again, you're going to be disappointed because you're going to take a big picture and turn it into a really small picture, and it's going to look very weird. But you can draw on it. So it's essentially a 16 by 16. Exactly. If you looked around. Uh, you probably figured out the size of it, and so this is ultimately ultimately the size of a fav icon. 
is um, 16 by 16 pixels. That's tiny. That's why That's why um, my fav icon was less than one kilobyte. It was like 900 bytes. Very, very small. So uh, to make a good fav icon is actually a little more complicated than you think because you're working with such a small space. And it's pretty basic. Um, pretty basic area to work with. But you can get good results, you know, look at the big names that you visit. If we go back, if we go to google.com, there is, is, is just the G on a field of blue. Amazon has their A in that little bent arrow. So within your confines, you can work with it. But it looks like, it looks like the lower keys depend on the drive rather than the CPU. Could be, because I do see also on dynamic drive, I don't have a lot of... Uh, it's The edges are very hard. And here they're a little bit more feathered. But you could accomplish that, you know. There's very uh, accomplished people that work great in, uh, you know, eight-bit graphic mode. That they can uh, make, you know, go in here and, and you start to add your your color variations, and then you're gonna get that sort of gradient. So let's say you've made your fave icon, um, and it's pretty much how you want it. Uh, you you need to remember to select down here, download fave icon. Now here's the thing again about sometimes I notice this web browsers get confused. I just created this new fave icon and I click download, but my preview here shows the same ic fave icon icon as from Dynamic Drive. That's probably because it's in the history, so I'm not going to worry about that, but as I said, just make a note of that. If I go find my file, I'm going to use that fave icon that I created instead of the koala. You can use either one, and you just need to copy it into the project. Yes. You could, but I don't recommend it. That's another thing about this sort of standard in that it uh, it's rigid in the name that it expects. It expects favicon.ico in the root folder. If you call it something else and change your change your code, it should work. But technically, you're not following the standard. Well, if you have two different sites, but they're separated by either different subdirectories or domains, so they should not conflict. There really only should be one fav icon file per site. Yes. So here it's happening uh, to me, like I'm saying, that even here on, on Windows, I know I copied my brand new fav icon that I designed, and I put it on the desktop, but it still thinks it's the koala. If I look at the properties of the file, it sees it's the right fav icon, but it still thinks it's the koala one. <coughs> so 
So I'm going to put my fav icon into my project. Yeah, I'm going to replace the old one. That's fine. Okay, now it realized the correct icon. And I don't have to change my code. But most likely, if I try to run this, let's see what happens. Okay, it did, it did refresh itself. And it shows. If it didn't, then maybe I just need to clear my cache and the history and that sort of thing. But there's my new fav icon. Okay, so what, this, what we've done here is we've created one type of uh, what I call this website branding. We're going to create a couple of other versions, too, to cover more bases. Because what this is doing here, this is covering um, classic web browsers, basically. And, I, and, and 16 pixels is not very good quality for these <coughs> modern devices, for the iPhones, Androids, Windows phones, Blackberries, the modern devices. So I'm going to show you then how to make a, a much more modern uh, fave icon so that, okay, now if someone comes to us in a more modern web browser, they'll get a nicer looking icon. And again, uh, this is something we can't quite test. You have to trust me on this. Once we upload this to a server and someone chooses to save the bookmark to their home screen, it'll take the icon, uh, sort of like an app icon. But uh, let's take a break at this point, and when we come back, we'll talk about more advanced fave icons. It's about 7.10. Let's take a break until 7.20. And then we'll be back.